Kazi Ranga National Park, a world heritage site in Assam, is known for the beauty and awe its forest and wildlife inspire. A paradise to nature lovers, birders and conservationists, it is home to two-thirds of the endangered one-horned rhinoceros, the highest density of the Bengal tiger in India, and has a large breeding population of elephants and wild buffaloes. However, very few people are aware of the fact that Kaziranga is also home to the last remaining herd of eastern swamp deer, Rusevas duveseli danjit singai, a threatened species. No species belongs to any one person in a literal sense, but one person may do more for bringing that species to other people. And I think Dr. Anjit Singh has played a critical role in uh, describing this subspecies, the Eastern Swamp Deer. I used to go to uh, Manas. I had been there before, and since uh, the early stages, I had noticed the difference between the Singha of uh, both uh, Kana and of uh, the nominate race in Dudhwa, with the population in Kaziranga, and I could see the difference phys uh, physically, morphologically. And uh, it was very evident. And therefore I wrote a piece of it in the, in the Cheetal magazine, based on my article, a very well-known uh, genetist uh, and uh, classification expert of the world, Colin uh, Groves, came to India and then he carried out uh, a much more thorough investigation and then determined that it was indeed a separate subspecies the eastern population and uh, then he he named it after me as the third subspecies of the Barasinga on the on the basis of my contribution to saving the Barasinga. <laughs> Unprecedented in India, a successful translocation involving capture, transport and release of 19 eastern swamp deer from Kaziranga National Park to Manas National Park took place. We are putting Kora inside, grass inside. <laughs> Eastern Swamp Deer, popularly known as Bara Singa and locally called the Dol Harina in Assam has about 800 to 1,000 individuals left in a single population in Kaziranga National Park. Elsewhere, the subspecies has become extinct, barring a few surviving individuals reported from Manas National Park. In Kaziranga, they are subject to many natural threats like heavy floods, erosion, and biological threats such as transmission of diseases from livestock from the peripheral parts of its habitat in Kaziranga. Just one big flood in Kaziranga could change the equation forever. One factor that we found uh, actually that could play an important role was the floods. The flood is a natural process in, in, in Kaziranga and therefore there are fluctuations but also uh, we have found in the past that uh, because of the floods, the populations have 
gone down significantly. Uh, low, for instance, uh, at one point of time, there were probably uh, 400 left. In the near future, emerging threats of big dams and hydroelectric projects in the upstream areas of Brahmaputra might carry severe problems for the wildlife in this park. On the basis of its threat categorization, this last single population of eastern swamp deer warranted an urgent need for a safe second home. This is climate change is happen happening, so in the next 100 years, we may not have Kajiranga here. So Brahmaputra may eat up all the Kajiranga. So then what will happen to these uh, animals? So we have to have a separate population, and that's why we are doing this translocation process. Signal, then we will open the outdoor doors. For the first ever mass capture and translocation of any ungulate species in India, a meticulously planned translocation strategy involving not only expertise of scientists and wildlife experts from across the country, but also an international expert in mass capturing and translocation of wild enulgates from South Africa, set into motion with capture BOMA being erected at Kaziranga National Park. Veterinary team from Guwahati Veterinary College collaborated with the I-4 WTI veterinary team to look after the health aspect of the deer during translocation. This is first of its initiative and uh, we have had experts uh, across uh, South Africa and uh, across the country associated uh, with it. <laughs> Though preparations for this pioneering translocation started much in advance, excitement escalated the night before the D-Day. Last-minute finishing touches were given to the specially fabricated trucks that would take the deer on their long journey from Gaziranga to Manas. Using soft materials, a natural environment was created inside the trucks to make the journey comfortable for the deer. These customized animal transporting vehicles were placed at the entrance of the animal capture boma in Kaziranga. It's a D-Day tomorrow. It's a turning point. And if you do it for swamp deer, then you can say that you can do for most species. While the trucks were being given last-minute touch-ups, the veterinary team was busy at the I-4 WTI-run Centre for Wildlife Rescue and Rehabilitation Testing Equipment and stocking up medicines for the big event the next morning. When the animals will go in, it's a strange uh, ambience for them. They might get nervous, they might uh, have infighting. So just to avoid them, we will administer sedatives. Uh, these are not immobilizing drugs. The animals will uh, still be awake, but uh, they will be calm. You know, we are also ready for eventualities. Some injury might take place, uh, and injuries could be of any kind. So for that, we have uh, other dirty equipment also will go with us. On the morning of 9th December 2014, the first attempt to capture and translocate the eastern swamp deer was made. A manpower of over 100 people was deployed to execute this exercise, with 14 forest department elephants being used to chase and gradually push herds of eastern swamp deer into the capture boma. As everybody watched with bated breath, it seemed a game of cat and mouse was on, with the deer just refusing to move into the boma. Finally, it was decided to call it a day and give rest to the tired elephants and the capture team. It was time for the strategy team to rethink, keeping in mind the capture situation on ground. They're not bothering about those people. If the deer come in, uh, and, and that wasn't there at the, at the start of the whole operation. Once they're inside, only after that, from one corner, the elephants can come in and drive. As you said, we have to look for a passive capture. We have accumulated a massive number of people and trying to capture it. 
if you force it, it may not happen. My suggestion is that we stick to the plan that we originally had to passively capture them. So you lure them in with salt or with phosphorus over time, and then when the time is ready and they're fairly comfortable in the bombers, then to close them in. And then with that, we can then move them forward into the truck. Uh, I have no doubts that it will work, it just requires a bit of patience. The Eastern Swamp Deer Conservation Project was launched in 2010 by the Assam Forest Department and Wildlife Trust of India and supported by Oil and Natural Gas Corporation. The research findings from Phase 1 of the project provided critical insight about the behaviour of the deer and propelled the project into its second phase of creating an alternate, viable home for the deer. Translocation protocols prepared in an international workshop held during phase one of the project in Assam were followed during this translocation. We got the experts together uh, last year and uh, developed a, a protocol. And that protocol suggests uh, exactly uh, how many deer should be moved out uh, how many deer should be released, how many deer should be supplemented in that uh, minus uh, captive population. In the second attempt to capture the deer, the boma was opened on all sides and the deer were given time to get habituated to the new structure in their territory. In the days that followed, as the team watched patiently, the deer started coming and sitting in the boma, especially at night to protect themselves from tigers and other predators. On the 27th December evening, on finding the deer inside the boma, the team decided that the time was right and two teams were deputed to spread to the east and west end of the boma. On the final night of capture, it happened uh, late at, at dusk present as well, um, we limited the people there only to the people who drove the deer and our head biologist after and the veterinarians that were Bhaskar and, uh, and the Guwahati veterinary college team. And the director of Kazaranga and I sat at a distance away and merely offered moral support and did not actually interfere. The third thing that uh, really worked was that during cover of darkness, which is when the deer started finally getting driven into the, into the stockade, uh, they charged back very unexpectedly. Uh, you wouldn't expect a deer to turn back and jump at you, but they did actually injure one of our uh, people and they jumped back. And then we, they were using torches, but they were not uh, having this idea of using a wall of light. So I merely suggested when, when after complained that the lights are not enough. I said, why not double the torches? Why not triple the torches? Why not use some uh, high-powered torches? Where the director of Kazanga then went into action and brought us some of the best torches I've seen in my life. And just using the, the set of torches in a manner to create a complete wall of light meant that the deer turned the other way uh, and entered where we wanted them to enter. <laughs> Yeah, actually we did the technique. That is the technique we used. We, we actually, actually made a new one. Ah, that is because this area is too big. Yeah. We will have to partition it. That dramatic night, the boma was curtained off and the deer were finally in. The next day, using movable screens, the animals were gradually herded towards the funnel in two lots. The entire team of Eastern Swamp Deer Capture and Translocation had a sigh of relief because the deer have, themselves have come into the plastic funnel and uh, they were trapped yesterday night. Now they are being herded towards the wooden funnel where the role of veterinarians will come in. The veterinary team divided into two, they will go and inspect each animal for their general health and then mark them with an ink at their back, which will indicate that the deer is healthy and ready for transportation. However, the challenge was far from over 
and the next big test of translocating the deer safely during the 500 kilometers long journey from Kaziranga to Manas Remain. The animals, they must be able to manage the pressure of, shear pressure of translocation, the distance. If it was two hours, if it is two hours, three hours, no issues. Anything above four, five hours, they have to be there for a long time, they won't keep quiet. So they have to withstand the pressure of translocation. That will be the biggest challenge. The overnight journey was not without its share of tense moments, with the vehicle carrying these endangered deer breaking down on the highway. <laughs> We started off with the news that there is a strike going on in the National Highway which forced us to change the entire route of the translocation. After travelling about 100 kilometers, one of our trucks actually broke down in the middle of the highway. The truck that broke down took us almost 8 hours to repair. Repairs done. The trucks set off for Manas National Park winding their way through crowded districts with people blissfully unaware of the precious cargo of the 19 hand-picked deer that the trucks carried. Manas was chosen as a viable second home as a few stray individual population still survived the dark insurgency period that resulted in virtually all wildlife in the park being wiped out and no threat of floods existed here. We did a survey of, of the potential sites and uh, uh, the most or the, the most suitable site uh, was Manas because uh, Manas doesn't get floods. So in that sense it's it's the safest but once we uh, repopulate Manas then we'll look at other sites also and, and see whether they need to be repopulated as well. The MJ has been uh, working with IFO and the Woodland Council and the Sun Forest Department to bring back Manas. And one of the uh, things that we did was to get Manas off the red list of uh, World Heritage Sites in Danger in UNESCO. There were some preconditions and one of the preconditions which was very clearly enunciated was the return of a swamp deer. The dawn of 29th December 2014 saw what had been unprecedented in India. The 19 deer safely translocated to Manas National Park without a single mortality after 10 hours of journey. This without any tranquilizing drugs being used for capture and translocation of these animals. A first in India, history had been made. Probably this should be, this should be my happiest day in my life. So it was a dream actually to translocate swam deer from Kaziranga to Manas to start a new population in Manas. So probably I am the happiest person today in this earth. The translocated deer were released into a specially prepared boma of about 14 hectare, which was later increased in size. Every pole used to make the barrier in the boma was made from boombax, a weed choking the Manas grasslands. The enclosure had been earlier flooded and short grass from surrounding areas transplanted into it to ensure the herd's well-being. It was secured by a two-line power fence installed over a boombax barrier to keep the leopards at bay. And as you can see, there are two lines of fence being erected. One is a solar powered electric fence and the next is a wall of boombax poles. We had a very small window of 40 days of timeline to prepare this entire boma, which is a huge task. And the biggest challenge is to put this boombax wall. And uh, we had about 150 manpower working day and night. The success of the translocation is further sweetened by the birth of three fawns to translocated females at the Swamp Deer Boma in Manas National Park, giving hope to the natural recovery of this beautiful subspecies who immediately settled in their second home. With the increase in population of the deer inside the boma comes the next logical step of releasing the first batch of deer in their second home of Manas National Park where there will finally 
reclaim their lost land. Bringing back uh, a species to a former habitat gives uh, a lease of life, gives it life to the species of concern and to the area where it is brought back. It gives a greater raison d'etre. And WTI, uh, on two counts, both for the rhino and the barasinga, has played a very significant role in, in both these efforts and, and dimensions. And therefore, um, I think it's something that uh, WTI can be justified to be proud of. Oh